Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like this video, please take a moment to leave a comment. Thank you. This is my second look at the uh, Case 098 large toothpick, the one that's five and a half inches long. Um, I was trying to think of how I could compare this with my other toothpicks and decided probably the best way to do this is uh, I'm just going to compare it with one of my uh, other large USA made toothpicks. I've got uh, 10 of them to choose from, um, but I've decided what I'm going to do is go with the one that I think is probably the best of the bunch in my uh, other uh, American made large toothpicks. Uh, by large toothpick, I'm required, I'm mean the ones that are five inches or more. A four inch toothpick um, is basically a medium toothpick. Five or more inches is a large toothpick. And so the one I went with is this one here by Queen. And this is their number 20 pattern. This particular one is the uh, 2008 um, and the Amber Stag Bone. And um, so let's get started comparing this knife to the Case Large Toothpick. Okay, let's look at the boxes first. And we have, this is the old green box by Case. Uh, some of the information you'll see on here is all on the flap, basically. See the Mediterranean Blue Bone, Large Toothpick, 0098. And then you have the full uh, number for this one, 610098SS, so you know stainless steel, case true sharp. And then you see the item number for the Mediterranean Blue Bone is 22132. Um, and then you see down here 4N021809. So without even looking at the tang stamp, we can tell from the box that this knife was made on February 18th, 2009. I, at least I believe that's what that stands for. And then you got a barcode. Now the Queen box is a much better presentation box. You see at the very top here it says tool steel. That means that it is the uh, Queen D2 tool steel that they're using for the blade instead of the 420 high carbon. You see made in USA there and then the address and their phone number. On this end, you see Queen Cutlery number 20 ACSB. So that's the amber or something stag bone. And then on this end, you have Queen Amber Stag and then Q2008. And the 2008 is actually 20, which is the pattern number. And then the 08 stands for the stag bone. And then you have the barcode. Much nicer box overall, though, and a bigger box for a smaller knife, which is interesting. But either way, that's the way it is. That's the two boxes. Let's move on to the knives. Okay, we'll start by looking at the uh, handles of the knives. And the Queen is five inches closed. We know that the case is five and a half inches closed. Um, both of them have nickel silver bolsters. Um, and if you notice, the nickel silver bolsters on top are about the same size. But the Queen's has this very short uh, powder horn bolster on the bottom. And um, that's something I'm not crazy about. I wish they would have gone with the more traditional, longer bolster that you usually see on a toothpick. I like that. It, it gives a much better, cleaner looking uh, view of the knife. I just really like the long bolster on a uh, toothpick. It just makes the knife really pop. And it's, you know, it's almost a signature of a toothpick to me. So I don't like the short uh, bolster that Queen uses on the bottom of their knife. However, this amber stag bone is just absolutely gorgeous. There is no way you cannot just almost drool over it if you're a knife collector. Queen does a wonderful job with this, or did a wonderful job with this, I should say. Uh, nice brass pins, and you can see brass liners and a uh, probably a D2 tool steel back spring also. And the nickel silver bolsters are well polished, but that one is just too short. And you've got the nickel silver shield. The shield is a little bit recessed into the bone, and that might be might be because of a. Uh, the deep uh, grooves in the bone. So, um, 
really can't complain. It looks gorgeous. Yeah, you can almost catch your fingernail on the transition, you know, but it is smooth if you wanted to rub your hand across it normal like, and you can still feel a little bit of the transition back here. As for the case, well, you've got the uh, Mediterranean blue bone and it's almost black in the middle and then it lightens up. It's kind of just, you see the uh, amber stag bone also lightens up. It's darker in the middle, but the case, it's almost black and then it gets to a lighter blue. And um, I don't know, it doesn't look nearly as nice as the uh, amber stag bone. Uh, to say otherwise is almost lying, at least in my opinion. But um, the transition is really smooth and good. Um, you also have your um, bra uh, brass liners and a stainless steel backspring in this case. I almost wished all of the blue was the lighter blue. That would have looked even better to me. What Case really has going for it in this knife though is the shield. This uh, nickel silver shield with the inlaid letters just looks fantastic. And uh, it's a little raised, but not too much. And that's mainly because of the jigging also. Um, but it's well set in there. And it just looks really good with the uh, long tail C and then the separate letters. So um, both handles look really cool. And look at how that case just kind of dances there. And you got the queen with the knife for the uh, cue. So the only real problem with the queen to me is the, uh, the short bolster. Um, and obviously the case has the longer bolster and the name in there. But the bone doesn't look as good as the queen. Let's move on to something else. And that something else would have to be the blade probably. So let's get the queen opened up. And we'll see here that the queen is right at four inches long and it's sort of a california clip or it's like a drop point or something going on but there's no distinct uh notion going on i mean it, it just kind of is rounded and smooth and drops down and you do have a little bit of a trailing point edge there and i can actually feel on the top here of the d2 tool steel there's like a little burr at the very tip here, which uh, I didn't notice before, but I can feel it now. So I'm gonna have to take and grind that down. Um, and then you have on here, Queen Cutlery Company, number 20, and then you see it says tool steel. And then we have the case blade. And this is a much more, ooh, uh, for one thing, it's got a much better uh, polish on it much high, much more highly polished and you have the distinct cut there of a California clip or muskrat blade and the length of that blade as you can see here is uh, over four and a quarter inches and the cutting edge on it itself is four inches now the cutting edge on the queen um, right at three and three quarter inches if you can see it there sorry for the glare yeah right at three and three quarters of an inch so if we look at it this way though you see that the case has a cutting edge as long as the blade on the queen so it, you've got an extra quarter inch of cutting with the uh, uh case blade now the case blade is um uh, they're two sharp stainless steel. The queen is in a um, D2 tool steel. And one of the things I noticed with the case, if you notice here, you've got a little bit of flex here. Now, that would come in real handy if you're um, uh, processing fish and such. So, and you got to remember these knives are bird and trout knives. That's what they uh, were originally. There is a little bit of flex also and the uh, queen uh, because these blades are kind of thin they're really designed for slicing um, if you see here side by side the uh, case starts out about as thick as the queen but as it gets down to that end it gets a little bit thinner i do not have something to actually measure it 
but I can tell you that the case is slightly thinner. And part of that is because it's a longer blade and it's coming to a very sharp point. Um, no burrs on that. Like I said, there's a slight burr at the tip of the queen. So that was a flaw in the manufacturing. If you see the blades, um, the case blade actually is straighter out than the queen. The queen actually drops in the handle. If you see there how it's dropping, the case, if the handle is there, it's straighter. So this is actually cutting downward. This is more straight. Um, ergonomically, I like the shape of the uh, the case blade better than the queen. I like the distinct cut. I like that it really looks like a California clip blade. This one kind of just kind of drops and I wish it didn't do that. I wish there was a distinct California clip. Um, and when the knife is closed, you see how it's rounded? I don't like the way that looks in the handle nearly as much as I like this. This one, it's you see how it drops there and then it just slopes into there. It just looks meaner and nastier. The, the queen looks a little bit bigger and bulkier, even though it's a five inch knife versus a five and a half inch knife. So uh, blade wise, uh, shapes of the blade and everything, the, uh, the case definitely wins. Um, however, you do have D2 in the um, queen. So you've got a uh, semi stainless uh, tool steel versus the, uh, I think it's a 425M, which is the case true sharp stainless steel. Um, which is a better steel? Obviously the steel in the queen, but really it comes down to what you're gonna be doing with the two knives because uh, it's, in some cases you may want that uh, stainless steel, especially around uh, salt water. So, which is the better knife? Well, if you're looking for a, a um, higher quality steel in the blade, then the Queen is going to be it. It's got the D2 tool steel, which is definitely going to be a better steel than the uh, Case True Sharp. It'll be a little harder to sharpen, but it's going to hold an edge longer than the Case True Sharp. However, if you're talking about something that's going to be filleting or something, you might have a better luck with the uh, uh, thinner blade on the uh, on the case. So it really depends on what you're trying to do with the knife. And like I said, this will probably um, uh, have less problems with rust and such, especially around salt water versus the uh, the steel and the uh, queen. I don't know if you're hearing that, but there is definitely a little bit of blade rub when I'm opening the queen. I do not have that problem with the uh, case. The case does not have the rub. At the same time though, the queen definitely has a better snap when you're closing it. Okay, anyway, back to the, which is the better knife. Um, the queen definitely has a much nicer looking bone on the handle than the case, but I still like the uh, bolsters on the case and I like the shield on the case. Um, as far as collectability goes, both of them are going to be fairly collectible. Um, the queen, queen is out of business, so you've got that going for this. And um, it's a good knife. Um, and a lot of people used to collect queens. But the thing is, is when it comes to the collector's market, a case knife, especially one that is out of production and not coming back around, in mint condition with the box is going to go up in value faster than the queen. So if you're looking at it um, as a um, as a collector's item, the case is going to retain its value or go up in value more so than the queen. Um, both of them are high-end knives, um, especially the uh, queen. The queen was really built to uh, use but as soon as you use it, you're going to have an issue with the uh, with the the etch on the blade. And once the blade etch is messed up, the collector's value of it drops. 
And then I also have a problem, like I said, there's a little burr at the end of this blade, which should not be there. So that was a, a flaw uh, from the factory with the queen knife. And then there's a little bit of rub as it's opening and closing, but that might be simply because it hasn't been opened and closed a lot. But uh, which is the better knife uh, for me? Um, I, I can't really choose. I like them both. They're both an excellent value. And uh, in mint condition, both of them are going to look great in a collection. And both of them will do the job if you need to get a job done. But uh, depending on how robust you need that job to be, you might uh, get a little bit more out of D2 tool steel over the Case True Sharp. But uh, a lot of people swear by the Case True Sharp too. So that's also your call. Um, but there you have it. Uh, two excellent USA made large toothpicks. The uh, 098 five and a half inch long um, case large toothpick and the Queen uh, number 20 um, large toothpick five inches. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Knife Chats, and if you did, please like and share it with your friends. Comments are always welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. Hope to see you soon. Now, someday I may carry these knives, um, you know, for a special occasion or something. I can picture me doing that. But for my usual everyday carry, this is the knife I carry. I actually do carry a five inch toothpick with me. And that's, you know, if I'm gonna collect them, I just as well use them too. And this is the one I collect and carry. And this is uh, the uh, Rough Rider five inch toothpick and the uh, saw cut bone. And I think it looks pretty dang good too. I mean, um, 440A razor sharp stainless steel that they talk about. I've been using this knife for a year, if you notice the blade is as tight as can be and this is after cutting up carpeting using it to cut up fish um, use it every day on cardboard and everything else as you can tell the blade is definitely scratched and abused and uh, been sharpened more than one time uh, but the knife is tight as can be and still has a excellent snap and so that's the knife i use so that these knives can uh, basically be uh, safe queens um, but yeah, uh, someday these probably will get carried once in a while, but this is my uh, everyday carry toothpick, just a simple Rough Rider.